All right, uh, moving on to our next uh, conversation. Earlier this month, we had the 2022 Nigerian Mining Week, uh, where issues around Nigeria's mining sector were discussed. We also had the Women in Mining in Nigeria Conference. Uh, to discuss uh, the prospects for the mining industry in Nigeria, we have engineer Janet Adeyemi, president, Women in Mining uh, in Nigeria, joining us uh, via Zoom. Great to have you on the program. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great to have you. So, uh, could you paint a picture of uh, women participation in the mining industry, you know, in Nigeria? When I hear uh, uh, mining, you know, it, it sounds like a man's game. Thank you, Ladi. That has always been the notion. Women in mining has always been, women has always been in the mining sector. But the only thing is that just like any other sectors, they made them so opaque not visible. Because even pre-colonial times, you have women, especially uh, history documented it around the Bay, around uh, Plato states, that women were there working. But you know, if you look at our started books, women are banned from working when they were working on their minds, even when they are still engaged, or they are not officially recorded. And this has been documented by Adair in his research work. But for, fast forward to present times, you find out that the number might not be much, but women are contributing in all aspects of mining, from exploration to processing and value addition. Well, how, how would you describe uh, inflow of investors into Nigeria's mining sector, you know, in, in 2022? We've had a couple of headwinds, you know, globally from the war in Ukraine. How is investment looking? The investment is really coming up, but you know that quite a number of things prompt investment uh, FDI direction. And one of such factors is having very robust data, having very good legal framework, regulatory framework to guide, and then your judicial system in case of arbitration and all that. So all these things play significant roles when you are talking about people coming into the country. But how big? There's no choice, because if you have to shift your energy, you know, from what it is fossil fuel based to clean energy transition, you need some minerals. And fortunately, unfortunately, Nigeria equally houses, uh, or let me say, God blessed or endowed Nigeria with some of these mineral resources. So you find out that the speed with which we want them might not be more compared to what federal government is doing to get aggressive in um, participation, but they are coming in gradually. And the 2020 week, witness such. I, for, for instance, I met a, a, a long friend of mine who used to be in World Bank and who came in, you know, in search of these critical minerals. You understand that's, uh, maybe I shouldn't mention her name, but quite a number of them are really coming. And when you look at the practice from time past to now, you could see that constantly, that's why even the initial negative perception, perception about the mining industry, which from Fayemi's time, you know, aggressively did so much. If you look at what you call the roadmap, improved the index perception so much, uh, perception of the mining sector. And then you find out that when you put our laws and you put everything we put into place, you compare it with other sectors, other countries, other mining jurisdictions, you find that Nigeria is not fearing, uh, it's, it's not, it's fearing well compared to others. So what is really lacking? is for us to have very good data. And thank God for the amount of, the quantum of money that has been released, federal government through its uh, uh, natural intervention, intervention fund, the World Bank Mind Diver Loan, then the partnership with um, uh, American US Geological Agency, we has boosted the quantum of data we have in the space to en encourage investors you know, to look in that direction because no investor wants to come into a country without having reasonable pointer to show that, oh, there are some reserve estimates, even if they have to do additional studies, because you can never have enough, enough information. But the basic data they have right now is sufficient to encourage participation. Thank you. And obviously, the, the, the mining sector is uh, quite a big one with uh, so many uh, minerals. Uh, how, are there any untapped opportunities you know, in that sector right now? The, the opportunities are numerous because mining has a lot of cross-cutting issues. So when you talk of opportunities, 
you have opportunities to mine various kinds of minerals, I, from silver to gold to cobalt to nickel to feldspar to fluorite, you know, and all these things have basic roles to play in various industries, some in pharmaceutical industries, some in construction industries, such as paints, you know, some in paper, paper industry. So these are investment opportunities. And beyond that, you have health and safety issues. You have equipment financing because you cannot mine without basic equipment. And these equipments are very capital intensive. So you need companies who can come in, set up leasing arrangements, set up manufacturing arrangements, you know, to mine. You have logistics. You have to move either by bulk materials from one location to the other. So trucking companies, you know, we equally have roles to play in this sector. You are looking at health and safety issues. Health and safety issues is very, very important, especially in the mining community, because you don't want to mine and then leave, leave the environment degraded. You don't want to mine and destroy the lives of people there because some materials can be very carcinogenic, you know, in the course of mining or even creates lungs and heart problems. So health and safety consultants will try. You look at procurement, procurement of various kinds of materials from blasting, from blasting materials to chemical equipment that will be needed, you know, to, because you find out that in some technologies now you don't even have to, you only have to do a kind of hot water injection procedure to bring out lithium. You don't have to really devastate and open up the places. So these are technologies that, that are needed. You equally need what you call um, technology, development of software. Here, our, our children, especially, understand the people I call the Gen Z generation, have so much to do in this area. Development of software, flooding the places, you understand, with all these things. Then, even providing food services, when, you know, uniforms, um, think of anything, you understand, you find out that the mining industry houses them. Are you thinking of? even helicopters, engaging helicopters to go to very remote areas. Look at Mambila area. Mambila is one of the blessed spots in this country, that is Taraba State, with beautiful gemstones and things like that. The time to cross over. you find out that if you have chopper services all over the place, the chopper will try. So as mining improves, you find that all these services will come to play. Thank you. Uh, I guess it's a, it's a massive uh, value chain that uh, we have in that sector. Uh, but let's, uh, the, the narrative, you know, has been that we, Nigeria as a country, we just export, you know, raw materials most of the time. We see the story in the oil, uh, with our oil output there, not uh, getting the amount of output we're supposed to get out. Um, how do we also, you know, change the narrative there with mining, where we're mining, we're actually exporting, you know, finished products and not just, you know, raw materials, you know, from the mining sector? For any country to actually develop, your natural resources must be processed within the country. The moment you keep on exporting your natural resources in the raw form, you are at a loss for it because anything you add value automatically jumps up the, the cost. It's just like somebody who grew the yam and somebody who processed it into yam powder. So it is always advisable we add value. And how do we do this? You can only do this when you are energy sufficient. Where do we have the energy? We don't have the energy. Foundries, for instance, I don't think we have any functional foundry in this country. You can't do much in the mining sector. It's very metal. We are dealing with metals without foundry. You need refinery to refine your gold. The energy consumption requirement is enormous. So these are some of the reasons. And I, and I think we should equally use this medium to call on governments to, to pay attention to that. Then you find out that most of our students, now is the time to start encouraging or even looking at our curriculum, you know, to change, to change some of our subjects so, to reflect the realities of the day. Things have changed from the era of A for Apple, B for Go. We should start looking for some other means, understand, of engaging these students at a very uh, early age. No wonder we started what we call the Girls for Mining Club. You know, right now in Taraba, it's been launched today. On the 10th, it was launched in, uh, in Plato State. The intention is to increase the number of people going, uh, who will probably look in the direction of the extractive sector to be able to utilize the sector for developmental purposes. And like uh, lapidary centers, for instance, where you teach people how to cut and polish stones, all the stones we use and wear, like I'm putting on an emerald now, and these are very expensive things. They look simple but expensive as well when you cut into shape. Last week we had 
what we call the Gold and Gem Conference in Lagos, is to showcase and show you bring like a B2B meeting where you bring producers, people who are exploiting, people who are cutting, people who are adding values. You know, you add value to your gold, you smelt it, add value, make jewelry out of it, beautiful jewelry. Women always like to adorn themselves with jewelry. That's one source of doing something. Like, like, the, like our flora, we should ensure we exp, uh, uh, extract them. Use them in toothpaste, in paint industry, and several other things. Use them even as insulators, our, our sands and things. So we used to have a, gla a glass uh, company in uh, all those things. The whole thing died off. You know, these are industries we should now set up all over. You know, private sector driven, maybe with less participation of government beyond maybe regulatory or something. That's where we'll be able to advance. And the trending thing is the critical minerals. And what is critical minerals? Critical minerals are minerals that are extremely very sensitive for the development of any country. You understand? And such minerals are not what you should just open to all. We saw what Canada did recently. Canada ensured that is restricting the mining of the critical minerals because these are things you will use in battery store, in production of batteries, in in the defense, in defense, in defense. In defense materials and all that. So if you allow exploitation of these things completely without adding value, you are at a loss for it because it's brought back to your country and it's sold to you. So what value is it to you when, and unfortunately they are finite materials. Once they are gone, they are gone. You can't replenish them because what you are tapping to the geology told us that some of them pre Cambrian age millions and trillions of years ago. So how do you replenish? So it's not a time to just joke. We cannot even afford to make the mistakes we made in the oil and gas sector and try and repeat the same mistakes in the in the solid mineral sector. That will only show that we are foolish as a nation. Thank you. All right, I guess it's time to to change the narrative, you know, in, in that sector. I want to thank you so much, uh, Engineer Janet Adeyemi, President, Women in Mining uh, in Nigeria. It's great having your perspective on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lady. I'm grateful. Bye bye.